for our next session. I'm Hagen Betzwieser, I'm part of We Colonize the Moon together with Sue Cork. Um, and I would like to introduce uh, the artists in residence in this exhibition in the Republic on the Moon. Uh, they've been one of our favorite acts in Cosmica. They are We Colonize the Moon. And so we have here uh, Sue and Hagen. And today we're going to try something we've done in the past, but in a bigger scale. So I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I'm just going to hand the microphone to them. Hagen? Arch House should be dynamic, affordable, and Apollo free. This was our official curatorial guidance. <laughs> so we are skipping all the Apollo part which we used in another piece of work. You think you know what you're saying, but you're not seeing Apollo. And we're going to talk about one aspect which was not taken care of by the Apollo crews on the moon. And what is that, Susan? What? 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 We're going to talk about our favorite project of the last year, the smell of the moon. Of course, he instantly would say it's like the smell of the moon. There is impossible. no smell of the moon. It's like it's impossible. It's like it's a vacuum of space, of course. Then they were wearing helmets, spacesuits. How the hell could they smell the moon? But, Susan, that's your part. Oh, yeah, the science bit. Okay, I've been no, 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 we're not on the science bit. We are on Neil Armstrong. <laughs> that part. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Okay, so basically, the surface of the moon is um, covered with a very fine, tacky, gritty dust. And when the astronauts first landed, they really weren't certain uh, whether it was going to be a millimeter or a meter, 10 meters or 20,000 meters of dust that they were going to disappear into. But they knew it was there. And this dust is the creation of the moon being bombarded for billions of years by meteors constantly, effectively, kind of like micro what do you call it? Micro abrasion beauty treatment that you pay a lot for these days, but the moon gets it for free. So it's a very, the very fine grain, or, or as Arsenal said, it's a very fine grain, almost a powder, which is the key element to the smell of the moon. Filthy astronauts. Filthy astronauts. So when the Apollo crew came back into the landing module, it is the dust in the spacesuits when they took off their helmets, which they smelled. And it's the reaction of the dust with the oxygen in the landing module after the landing. So the smell of the moon is based on experiences of the Apollo crew after returning to the LEM or the command service module. Uh, it's the reaction of oxygen and moisture effectively with smell molecules. So it's the dust in reaction with oxygen that made the smell. And the smell of the moon is only based more or less on quotes and communication from the Apollo crew and a couple of quotes which are kept or... Yeah, in, in court they call it anecdotal evidence. <laughs> so the famous evidence of the smell of the moon is from Charlie Duke who said, it's a very strong smell, it has the taste to me, gunpowder and the smell of gunpowder too. This is the best we know about the smell of the moon. So a couple of years back we got approached by the Arts Catalyst. In a pub. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually it wasn't. <laughs> and we said what we really would be interested in is like to, to create the smell of the moon and work with the smell of the moon. So we collected every evidence we could find, all these quotes, and we contacted the brilliant perfumer Steve Pierce from Omega Ingredients, who worked with NASA before, and he's, asked him. Sorry, no, I was just going to say he's the man responsible for designing the toothy smell in your toothpaste and the soapy smell in your soap and <clears throat> strawberries and strawberry jam and that kind of thing. So we. We basically asked him if, like, if we deliver him like um, evidence of the smell of the moon, could he create something for us that is the smell of the moon? So what he did is he created for us the smell of the moon, Moon Dust Natural R342, which we used in our first piece of work, which is the scratch and sniff postcard, which we made for the Stately Museum, where you can scratch and sniff the smell of the moon. It's available downstairs in the Pop Rock Shop from Super Collider. Hitch, hitch. And that smell then was used. So we got asked when we did this, is this really the smell of the moon? And it got picked up by blocks and by press and so on. And we actually have to thank the press and media to yeah. make this the smell of the moon. Because what happened then... Well, 
it got blogged and we got requests for um, prints and we sent some to NASA and... <coughs> So the press actually confirmed to us that this is the smell of the moon. Even like Wyatt, for example, contacted Buzz Aldrin and he said, yeah, that's it, this is how it smelled in the days. I'm very proud on that. Edgar Mitchell said that's it. And even Bob Jacobs from NASA said, it's like, yeah, it smells like I'm having a fireplace in my office now. Yeah, and uh, Edgar Mitchell, along with um, f uh, fact, um, sorry. Edgar, Edgar Mitchell complained his office stank of the smell of moon dust, and we have the same experience at Fact in Liverpool. Because Mike Stubbs With said, Mike yeah, Stubbs. his office smelled for weeks like the smell of the moon. We apologise. So the smell of the moon was then taken to our installation we did for the first of the Republic of the Moons in Liverpool at Fact, where we created this massive environment with an Apollo astronaut in a test chamber and wireman, you had to pass through an airlock to go into a ring of fake moon rocks, authentic fake moon rocks, that's very important. And the astronaut got in a ring of rocks and he periodically sp sprayed them with the smell of the moon. So, after we that, did that piece, and this was the second time that we used the smell of the moon and we created this massive environment, we thought, how can we transport the smell of the moon to a wider audience? We have to scratch and sniff. We can't take every time the Apollo astronaut to pollinate a ring of stones. We have to go back to a very simple concept to communicate the smell of the moon. So we came back to the idea of microencapsulation of micro-encapsulation. <laughs> micro-encapsulation is the system that we use for the scratch and sniff prints. And Sue, as a printmaker, can explain that in perfection. <laughs> All right. Um, micro-encapsulation, as I understand it, printmaker, not chemist, um, is it's a bit like M&Ms. It's a kind of soft center in a hard shell. So the smell, the, the smell molecules are trapped, effectively, within a hard but brittle shell. And we mix the ink and they're printed onto a flat surface and they self-seal and then to disturb them a scratch or a, a rub with your finger breaks the shell and the smell is released. Yes, but this is on a scale of 10 nanometers. So we thought, if we take this concept and just make it bigger, the smell of the moon, of uh, the idea of micro-encapsulation, so, okay, it's the encapsulation matrix. If we go to a different scale and we just get rid of the encapsulation part and that, and blow it up. So this balloon, more or less, danger, danger. is resampling one smell molecule. So what we did is we encapsulated the smell of the moon in a balloon. And to make this a mouse experience, it's not done with one balloon. And the system, we call the system, by the way, Life Moon Smellings. <laughs> and I'm very proud tonight to present here for Cosmica in London the most extreme Life Moon Smelling ever done. We did massive moon smellings, we did large moon smellings, we did a very large moon smelling last year in Hong Kong. And this is the most extreme life moon smelling on Earth to date. I so if I could have a bit of help, because we have to distribute the smell molecules to can the we, audience, and we you have all have to participate. Beautiful volunteers, please. Did we actually already distribute the uh, toothpicks? Yes, okay, so if I can do... Does everyone has a toothpick? Does everyone got a toothpick? It's fantastic. Hold on to your toothpicks. Okay, now, this, this is the bossy... Oi! Careful, careful, careful with the ceiling. The ceiling is quite tricky. This, so. this is the bossy bit. Please, please, please hold on to your balloon very carefully and don't let it bang into anything. Yes, and no balloon, balloon popping before I say it, okay? <laughs> all preemptive balloon popping will be severely punished. So get balloons all the way over to the audience in the back. We have to create kind of like a smell molecule grit in here. So as better the balloons are distributed, as better is going to be the experience in a second. Are all the balloons on the way? Yes, fantastic. Careful with the roof, volunteers. So I got the balloon myself. Uh, 
Um, if, if there isn't strictly one balloon per person, we hope you'll all play nicely. <laughs> okay, I can see balloons getting everywhere now. So we count down and then we all collectively try to pop the balloons, which will recreate kind of like the moment of stepping into the landing module. <laughs> and the moon smell, this is like the most moon smell we ever had in a space. So we pop the balloons and then I want you to be quiet for a second and just enjoy the pleasure of um, experience the surface any, smell of the any moon. yoga experts out there, this is the time to practice your inner breathing. Okay, three, three. two, two. one.